Jan with Jan Paddock Quilts. And right now we're focusing on the dual purpose block of the month we're doing. You can either make, the, or you can make both, either make this large quilt that will come out of the blocks or a table stand quilt for each set of blocks. So far we've covered March hairs and April showers, May flowers. Now we're doing a double wedding ring and that's what we're going to focus on today. A few years ago my daughter Kelly who was dinking around on the internet told me that the most widely searched for quilt pattern on the internet was the double wedding ring and she said mom you've got to make a double wedding ring quilt and I said but double wedding ring quilts are pieced and I don't do piece quilts I do applique quilts and she said I don't care you've got to do a double wedding ring pattern so I knew what a double wedding ring looked like but I decided I would adapt it to applique instead of piecing and what I came up with was Jan's double wedding ring we have a dark version and a light version you get both of them in one pattern and I'd show you the quilts, but Kelly has this one and my sister has this one. So I can't show you the big quilts. But we, when I decided to do the double wedding ring for the table stand and the big calendar quilt, I simply adapted it to a smaller block. These are 18 inch blocks uh, and this is only a 12 inch block. Okay, in the double wedding ring you have five different pieces. That's all. One, two, three, four, five. But to keep them all from looking exactly the same, which I find boring, there are seven different colors. And in your pattern, it will tell you pattern A in this one is color one, B is color two, up here A is color six and color seven. You don't have to use, if you have one of our kits, you can use, you can follow the uh, color picture but if you don't just pick seven different colors and every time there's a six you use the one color and every time there's a seven you use the second color okay so you take your pattern trace it onto freezer paper like we do with everything else cut them out and then there's kind of a trick to cutting them off the fabric uh, out of the fabric. Iron it on to your fabric just like you do any other freezer paper applique and then you take your ruler and I just use a little teeny one because they're, they're little pieces and cut along well if you're yeah that was it Okay, the two sides that are straight, I never could cut sitting down. The two sides that are straight, I'll turn this around so my hand isn't in the way. Just lay your fourth inch on your ruler along the edge, press down, and cut. So now we've done the straight edges with the ruler and the rotary cutter, but we need to do the curved edges. So get your sandpaper board, lay your pattern and your fabric on it. This will keep your fabric from moving because this is kind of important. Okay, now just turn the ruler along the curve, lay it around the edge and mark a fourth inch. And then turn it around and do the same thing. So now you have your curves. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and cut that out with a pair of scissors. You can see that that's what you need to do. You need to cut along there with a pair of scissors. Okay, so then you will have your pattern piece and it will look like this. Curved on two sides, straight on two sides. Now you need to lay them out like this we're going to lay them out and sew them together to make the, the ring and the only thing you have to be careful about is follow your pattern 
and A goes like this and make sure your curve is on the inside. Okay? B will go like this. Then C. Then D. Then E. I've got two Bs here. I wonder why. Okay. All right. So now you've got those laid out and make sure it does a curve here and a curve here. All right? Then sew them together. And I leave the paper on to sew them together. Lay it like this. Sew these two together. Open it out. Then sew this one on. Sew these two. Open it out. Then you can pull the paper off. Okay? But I sew it on with the paper. If you catch the edge of the paper, when you go to pull it off, it's going to pull off real easy. Okay? So now you'll have a ring like this. And this will be this ring up here. Okay? Really, it's going to be this ring like this. A, B, C, D, and E. Okay? All right, and you're going to sew those all together, pull the paper off, and then take an iron and iron your seams all the same way. All right, so now you have your ring, but you've still got to sew it down. So, what I did with that, trace off this whole section, okay? So you have a piece that looks like this, okay? Now, take a scratch paper. Oops, that's the kit. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that. Tori will hit me. I'll use this. <laughs> Get in trouble from Tori. I do need my little scissors, and they're in here. Just in case there was any question about this, you just take this and trim it along the line. Okay. There you have piece A again, and this is for the first one, okay? So you do that. Now, we have this, and it goes like this. What did I do with my glue stick? That's my cutting sheet. Now take your glue, well, the first thing I'm going to do before I glue it, is I'm going to take the curve and you're going to go back out and you have your drawings here and you're going to just cut it up to the line. Don't go past the line. Okay. Couple three on the little ones, just a couple times on the big ones, couple three. Okay. Now you've got that all done one way. You take your double wedding ring like that. And since this is fabric and this is paper, okay. You're just going to glue this down to the paper. And turn it over. And I would do this on another piece of paper because of the glue. And be careful on this first one because it's kind of easy to get this one too big and then you don't have any room over there because the fabric will kind of shift. Okay. All right. Now we will do the end.
and the other end. And this works just as well on the little one or the great big one for the 18 inch block. And you don't clip the outside curves. That makes points, just the inside curves. And I'm sorry this is a little late getting out, but the quilts went to market and I didn't, so. I had to wait for them to get back. All right, now, and I should, I didn't get enough glue there, I thought I hadn't. And you can use, in fact, I probably would use my little clover iron to do this too. But especially when you're on the seams, the, sometimes I think the glue works better. Oh, come on glue stick, where are you? There you are. It's in there. There. Yeah, especially when there's a seam, you have to glue the fabric and the paper and the, okay, there. Once again, there's a seam there, seam there, stick it under there, seam there. Okay, see, there you have a very neat and easy now you need to get all four of them glued down and ready and set them on your background so you can see where they will touch here. Okay, so you get those all done. In the big quilt, since we were dealing with 18 inches, I put a circle star there so you didn't have to worry about it quite so much. Because <laughs> if it doesn't exactly come out right, you just cover it with a circle star. Uh, this is primitive quilting. Anyway, it's, it's really simple now. It's, it's not hard at all to now just applique that down. And then you cut a slit in the back and pull the paper out. Because it's all one big piece. It's not all these little pieces anymore. It's one big piece that's the right shape. And if you, you can try doing it without putting the paper behind it, but I found that really hard to get it even. This way you know it's even, it's a simple curve. It's real simple. Glue them all down and stitch. Applique. Use your basic applique stitch. Okay, so to recap, to do the double wedding ring, cut all your pieces out from uh, using the pattern out of the correct fabrics because there's seven fabrics and five pieces. Follow your pattern and do that. Cut your pieces, leave the paper on, and sew them together into uh, your ring. Then take your ring, trace your big ring out of freezer paper, and glue your fabric ring to the, the paper ring. Making sure as you do it that when you lay these out that you have the curve up and the outside curve down. Okay, so you got to be careful about that. All right, then once you get that done, you make all four of these pieces and lay them on the background here so that the tops touch and you'll just kind of have to wiggle them till everything is in place. Uh, then I would take my Apple glue and glue them down before I sewed them. I didn't say that before, but I would take my Apple glue and glue them down and then sew it down. I love the way double wedding rings look, but I've tried piecing them before and it just didn't work very well for me. I'm not a very good piecer, but this is really very easy. So you can make your own double wedding ring table stand or you can make a whole quilt. So today we played with the double wedding ring, which is one of the most popular quilts around, but we used applique instead of piecing. 
So we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from Jan Patty Quilts. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks and have a good day.